This morning I got here at quarter to six um, and it takes three hours to set this counter out because of the size of it and the preparation work that has to go into it. But a normal morning I'll get here at half past six because I can't get in the market till then. Um, and again it takes about three hours to set it out, three man hours to set it out. 7.46 sir. Okay, fair enough. And also uh, Scarborough. 4.33. Well, what a change from the market, eh? Here I am doing a bit of gardening. and That's what I've moved on to since I left the market back in May of 2008. I was very apprehensive what was going to happen to me what the future was going to hold. Now, I mean, the market's all I've ever really known. But when I left school, I did do a couple of years horticultural apprenticeship with the Coventry Council, which I was very grateful for. And that stood me in good stead. We've been trading out of Coventry Market since the end of... End of July, beginning of August. Yeah, end of July, beginning of August. Um, but we've also been training out of Nuneaton Market. Now, I know it's a bit of a plug, but Nuneaton Market's been very good for us. It's an outdoor market since May. And we decided to move into Coventry as it's a fairly big city. You obviously have the university here, so a lot of our customers are students from the university. So we decided to give Coventry a try and the management have been brilliant helping us get started. And that's why we decided to try in Coventry. What's it like being a tattooist? Um interesting. I meet lots and lots of different types of people from office workers, policemen, uh, to your general everyday building labourers or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. Basic tattooing needle, which is a 14, a 14 needle round shader. That's it. And the amount of that needle that will go in your skin will probably be two millimetres, if that. Um, so anybody that's put off by needles in tattooing, believe me, it's not to be feared, because at the end of the day, we're tattooing your skin, not your bones, and two mil at the end of there is nothing.
About two years ago, we went to, to a house in Wobley, a private house in Wobley, and he had, the guy who died, had 4,000 books. Uh, but unfortunately, every one of them was uh, on the third floor of the house. Nigerian brown beans, what they do is they boil the beans till it's very soft, they put a bit of salt and pepper, and then they put the palm oil onto the beans. And then they put it in the bowl to cool it down a bit, and then they put the yellow gari on top of the beans. Because I've been selling books privately for 15 years, um, but I thought, right, I'll try the market, see how it goes. Okay, we're in the famous Coventry market today in our black and white, and we're signing copies of my new book, The Two Town Trail. There it is. And we're getting lots of people in, and uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting is we're getting a lot of young people are kind of interested in Two Town. 14 year olds and people even younger. Well, I left school when I was 16 and come and work for somebody on a sports stall in the market. And then five years later, I've got this stall, Unit 30, which is my own. And then I've been working here ever since. I've been just over 10 years I've been working here. Today is the 12th anniversary of an accident that I was involved in. I was travelling back from uh, an appointment in Liv one of the Liverpool hospitals and a driver drove into the back of me. I received a severe brain injury and was told that I'd never work again. I had to basically learn to live again, lost everything and went through a long compensation claim that after nine years I realised that every time we were due to go to court the insurers of the other side would say that um, they needed more medical reports and two years ago I just decided if I wanted to be able to start my life again I would have to give up the case, um, accept minimum compensation and try and use that money to rebuild my life. Hence I bought the market store. Well yeah, I run a, a, a publishing company. Um, it's called 21st Century Music Publishing. Um, we're not making any money, it's sort of a, more of a charity at the moment but we're trying to help local bands um, we're running a couple of open mic nights and uh, putting on shows ourselves under the guise of the Elastic Band. We're going to do the next bit and cashews with Rachel down by that Thai store as long as they haven't shut with a bag of cashew nuts. <laughs> You guys are pros, aren't you? <laughs> One, two, three, go! We're getting to that bigger space. 
And he, should we just record a wild track noise? Don't take your eyes off. Keep giving him playback, let's rehearse it then. Okay. Two, three, go! Poverty market, all kinds of everything. Something for everyone. Look at the camera! There's no comparison. Genuine bargains, explore what's in store. Confused or abused, just ask what it's for. A treasure of wonders, exciting, enticing. It's every kind of actually know the words to this chorus. So if you think you don't know them now, jolly well learn them in the next five minutes because I'll have to be taking people out of shots. Well, we're a little bit behind schedule at the moment. Um, it's, it's okay. Um, and I'm being a bit greedy because there's one particular shot that I want that isn't that necessary, but I think it will be a really attractive shot. I took over the running of the business in 1993 and was keen on introducing some kind of celebration cakes and things like that. Well, we actually um, opened another part of the business called Cakes by Maria's. I think wedding dresses are very unusual to sell from a market store. You just normally get your fruit and veg, um, your nets, you know, your rugs and underwear. You never get wedding dresses. The first in the West Midlands, I presume. So we met in the market, eventually Paul had the courage to ask me out for a drink and went from there. <laughs> 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 this place in which we are now met has been duly sanctioned according to law and we are here today to witness the joining in matrimony of Paul and Uta. Paul, what you say after me? Uta, I give you this ring. Uta, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. And as a token of the love we share. And as a token of the love we share. Paul, I give you this ring. Paul, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. And as a token of the love we share. Paul and Uta, you have both made the declarations prescribed by law and have made solemn promises to each other in the presence of your witnesses and family and friends gathered here today. I am very pleased to tell you that you are now husband and wife. This is our treatment room. Um, we now do body piercing and reflexology, aromatherapy and massage. It's been specially built just for us. Richard built it all himself and we're really, really proud of it basically. Yeah. Yeah, we sell a lot of incense. That's probably our biggest seller. I come from Pakistan and I born in Pakistan, but uh, five years ago I come to England. I'm uh, married and uh, I have an indefinite visa here. We are selling all of uh, Asian vegetables like uh, bitter gourd, like uh, lady, finger, lady fingers, bullet chilies, anything like uh, we call it Tinder. Nobody uh, knows what, what is this, but uh, Asian people knows that's it, Tinder. I was doing boot sales and the fellow that uh, was buying stamps off me said why don't you go to Coventry Market, they need some fresh scope. So I came along here and lo and behold he turned out to be the manager. And he let me have the store for two days a week because I'm 82 now. Uh, when I first started back in, in the job was about um, 1983. Previously I'd worked uh, weekends for my father as a Saturday boy like. I used to be a, uh, an exporter but 
I've been doing this now for nearly 30 years, so that was a long, long time ago. I've always done lorry driving. And then a couple of years ago, I had a thing called an aneurysm on my brain up. No. And I had to stop the lorry driving, so I decided to sort of come down here and set up a stall. Running a market stall, it's hard work, I suppose. Um, we sell mostly our computers, we tend to sell to older people, I think, because a lot of older retired people come in the market. And they tend to be the ones that buy our computers and we teach them how to use them. When I first came into the market in the mid-70s, I bought a house on Broad Lane, and then the same week, I paid exactly the same amount of money for this business, which was £15,000. And on reflection, it was quite a lot of money in those days, and those houses are now worth a quarter of a million pounds, and I doubt very much that the business is. Not a soul inside, the only sound. 
Hershey Market, local filmmaker Alan Van Wigerden has produced a special film all about the market. It's due to be redeveloped at the end of this year. It's been here for 50 years and we're very much looking forward to it either being renovated or rebuilt. In the redevelopment the whole of the city centre will be redeveloped and we're hoping the market will be a central feature of, of the redevelopment as in past years we felt the market has been at the back of everywhere although it's very well used and we're hoping that in this redevelopment the market will now feature to be in the very centre of everything as it's the biggest uh, building in the town centre and it's also I believe the busiest for footfall with about four million people a year going through it. Yeah I think the main idea for the market is making this uh, purpose-built double level hall for the market more space for the market, making a purpose-built level, but really keeping the essence of the traders of the market and the use of the market, but giving them as well an outdoor space for them to spill out to. So coming out directly from their purpose-built level here, connecting to the upper level, which takes you through the bull yard, and being able to come across Corporation Street into the square in front of IKEA. And it's that uh, making the inside and the outside work together that you don't have in the current market. My favourite story was down the old market, down the old fish market, where there's 13 stalls. There's an Indian guy who used to come in and he used to try and look for the best price on everything. And it, it was pouring down a rain outside and every stall holder put a spat into his open umbrella. So obviously he got about 20 or 30 spats in his umbrella and he went outside down the old loading bay walked outside into the rain and then consequently put his umbrella up and rain in sprats. There's one I would like to tell you about a clock which a gentleman bought from us and I forget how much he paid for us and we, we always give a guarantee out with anything electrical and I said to him now whatever you do don't overwind the clock but if you find anything wrong with it bring it back which he brought back and I said to him at that particular moment time, my brother-in-law actually worked on the stall as well and I said to him to take it to my brother-in-law and he would change it for another clock. Well, when he, my brother-in-law examined the contents of the bag, it actually stripped the whole clock down to nothing. It was all in bits. My brother-in-law says to him, well, it's a bit hard to take this back to the manufacturers, whereupon the, the customer actually threw the clock then at my brother-in-law. <laughs> Good days. <laughs> and this chap, he comes along and he says, I'll have a pound of pears. Well, they were William pears, which are quite big. And you could either get two, which was under a pound, or three that was over a pound. So they was a sixpence a pound. And I said to him, that's over, that's sevenpence. And he said, that's just typical of you cheating market traders. I asked for a pound and you want me to pay extra. So I said, I'm awfully sorry picked up the pair, had a couple of bites out of it, put it back on, I said, the art's dead on a pound. <laughs> and it's three for two pounds. Uh, and I'll sleep for 20 bucks. For a 20 virgin. <laughs>